Welcome back to another episode of English Cooking, where I teach you English through cooking. Guys, today we're going to make one of the most popular foods in North America. If you come to Canada here or the US, or even other countries like England or Germany or you know Western Europe, I don't know about Eastern Europe, I haven't spent too much time there, or Australia or any of these kind of so-called Western countries. I just made some air quotes. If you haven't seen my video about air quotes, I'll post it up here at the end of this video so you can learn what that means. If you go to any of these Western countries, you know, you'll find a food that people eat a lot of, okay? And that is mashed potatoes. Mashed, have you ever had mashed potatoes? Let me know down in the comments if you love mashed potatoes. Everybody here loves mashed potatoes, okay? Now, sometimes when people say that word, mashed potatoes, when you say it fast, it sounds like mash potatoes, mash. But actually, it's mashed potatoes, okay? Because the potatoes have been mashed. Do you know what mash means? If you mash something, it means you kind of squash it. Like, okay, I mean, there's a potato, right? If you mash it, it just turns into like, kind of just, it, it loses its shape, right? It's become soft and just, just like that, right? It doesn't, it doesn't have its shape, right? Now, we can't just mash this potato now because it's too hard. So we're going to boil the potatoes until they get soft and then we're going to mash them, okay? So for this recipe, guys, you need three kinds of potatoes. This is Mark's mashed potatoes recipe, okay? Um, normal mashed potatoes probably don't have three kinds of potatoes, but for Mark's mashed potatoes, you need three kinds of potatoes, okay? You need a yellow potato. We got that right here, that's called a yellow potato. You need a red potato, which is that kind of potato right there and you need a russet potato. Okay, look at this, it's called a russet potato. It's kind of that, kind of that dirty brown color, right? Russet potato. So, I mean, this makes sense, it's yellow. This one makes sense, it's red. Maybe this one should be called a dirty brown potato, but it's not, it's called a russet potato. Okay, now we are going to uh, start off by grabbing a potato peeler. This kind of a utensil is called a potato peeler, okay? So let's start with our yellow potato and we'll just start peeling the potato. Now, guys, potatoes are probably the most common vegetable here in North America. Why? Because they are eaten for breakfast, lunch, and dinner or supper, if you want to call it that. Do people eat it for breakfast? You might be wondering, what well, people don't eat potatoes for breakfast, Mark. You're wrong, they do. It's one of the most popular breakfast foods called hash browns. Okay, now we're not making hash browns today. Maybe in the next video I'll make hash browns. Okay, hash browns are extremely popular. If you go here to some restaurant and order breakfast, you know, if it's kind of like a full breakfast, it'll probably have eggs, bacon, sausages, hash browns, for sure. So uh, hash browns are, are very, you know, a really common breakfast food. And then for lunch and for supper, you know, people eat um, French fries. If you go to any, you know, fast food restaurant, McDonald's, Burger King, a and people eat French fries and they just love french fries. Yeah, I mean, you don't go to McDonald's to eat rice. Have you ever seen someone eating rice at McDonald's? I've never seen that before. Have you ever seen someone eating like broccoli? I should keep peeling while I'm talking. Have you ever seen someone eating like broccoli at McDonald's? I've never seen that. People don't go to McDonald's to eat those kinds of vegetables. They go to eat french fries and hamburgers but french fries are extremely popular. Now, for a supper meal, you know, very often people might eat steak and mash, mashed 
potatoes, right? So that's what we're making today, mashed potatoes. You know, so it's, it's a very common food for like even lunch, lunch and supper, people would eat mashed potatoes here. I mean, not for every meal, but for a lot of meals, right? Like I said, it's one of the most common foods. You'll definitely experience that if you come here to, you know, Canada or the US. You know, sometimes I talk to people from Southeast Asia and they ask me, oh, did you eat rice today? Have you, have you eaten rice? And I say, no, I didn't eat rice today. Didn't eat rice yesterday. Probably won't eat rice tomorrow. And it's just like, they can't comprehend it. Because in those countries, like Vietnam, the Philippines, Indonesia, people eat rice every single day, right? It's, a, it's the most common food. It's the most popular food. So that's one cultural difference between, well, when it comes to food, right? Here, people eat uh, other things. They eat potatoes and they eat, you know, hamburgers and that kind of stuff. They don't eat rice very often. I mean, it doesn't grow here. Rice doesn't grow in Canada, right? So it makes sense that in those countries, people eat a lot of rice. Like if you go to India, people eat rice a lot. Why? Because it grows there. It grows in the Philippines, right? It grows in Vietnam and all those countries because the climate is, you know, it's nice. It rains a lot there and uh, they have, have a lot of like rice fields and stuff. But I've never seen a rice field in Canada. I don't know if it's possible to grow rice here. I just have never heard of, I've never heard of someone growing rice here. Okay, so that's one difference. That's why people don't eat a lot of rice here. So it's really not a staple food here. Now, the word staple, if something is a staple food, that means it's like the basic food that people eat. All right, if you go to India, the staple food is rice. Just people just eat rice with almost every meal there. Well, in Canada, it's not a staple food. Right, in some countries, bread is the staple food. Actually, in a lot of countries, bread is a staple food. It's one of the staple foods here in Canada, too. People eat a lot of bread for breakfast, especially, or for, you know, for lunch, if they're eating a sandwich. They might eat bread once or twice a day, or maybe even three times a day. Yeah, it's taken me a while to peel these potatoes. Potatoes are sometimes kind of hard to peel because they have eyes. Did you know that potatoes have eyes? Look at this. See those things on the potato? Those like little things, like roots, kind of, or sprouts that kind of grow, kind of growing out. Those are called eyes. Those are the potato's eyes. Smash like if you didn't know that potatoes have eyes. Look, the potato's watching you. <laughs> I don't know why red potatoes seem to have more eyes than the rest. But yeah, red potatoes have a lot of eyes usually. I think red potatoes are maybe the most commonly grown potato here in Canada. I'm not sure, don't quote me on that. But um, let's start peeling our red potato here. Now guys, let me ask you a trivia question. Trivia, do you know what trivia means? Trivia means um, like a kind of a fun quiz question something to test your knowledge. So I'm gonna ask you a trivia question to test your knowledge about Canada, okay? Which Canadian province do you think grows the most potatoes? Of all the Canadian provinces, which one? Let me know your answer down there in the comments before I tell you. Well, it would make sense for the largest province to grow the most potatoes, right? I mean, which province is the biggest? Which, in Canada, which is the biggest province? Do you remember our cross Canada trip that I did a couple years ago? That was fun. <laughs> we went from coast to coast, from west coast to east coast, and uh, we visited all the provinces, all the 10 provinces in Canada. Which province is the biggest? Well, I'll tell you, it's Quebec. Quebec is the biggest province, not Alberta, where I live. <clears throat> Alberta's number six on the list. We need to 
figure out a way to expand our territory so Alberta can be number one. Wouldn't that be cool if Alberta became number one? But Quebec is the, is the biggest, right? So do you think Quebec grows the most potatoes of all of Canada? I'll tell you. The smallest province in Canada grows the most potatoes. Can you believe it? It's the smallest province that grows the most. Now, do you remember which the smallest province is in Canada? If you'll remember from my trip, we spent a couple days there, I think, and I'll give you a hint. It's an island. The smallest province in Canada is an island. Do you remember what it's called? It's called Prince Edward Island. It's a tiny island. Guys, Prince Edward Island is small. I mean, it's really small. And it grows the most potatoes out of all the provinces. And guess which province is second on the list? Alberta. So we grow the second most potatoes. At least we're second. Alberta is the first because I'm here. All right, that's what it's, that's, that's what Alberta is the best for. We're the best because of me. Smash like if you agree with me. If you disagree with me, you don't get any mashed potatoes. <clears throat> All right, so we finished peeling our potatoes, guys. And uh, now we need to cut them. All right, so um, let me just grab a knife. The knife clean? Yeah, it looks clean. Okay, so um, how are we going to cut these? Well, let's uh, let's quarter this one. If you quarter something, you cut it into quarters, okay? So, look at that. <clears throat> That's that way. Now I'm going to cut it this way. <clears throat> look at that, it's quartered, right? There's the whole one, and then there are the quarters. That's called to quarter something. So I just quartered this potato. Um, actually, I'm going to cut it into a little bit smaller pieces just so it's easier to, to boil. So it kind of gets nice and soft and mushy. Kind of if potatoes, after, after potatoes are boiled, you can call that mushy. They're kind of mushy. Um, that texture. Okay, so uh, we're going to just cut them into smaller pieces here. Now you could call this like cubing, a cubed or a diced the potato, right? It's kind of chunks, chunks like that. You could call it to dice or to cube the potatoes. So we're just going to chuck them in there. And we'll do the same with this russet potato. Just uh, chop it up into some pieces. So there's your trivia. Let me know, did you get it right? So yeah, isn't that interesting? The um, the smallest province in Canada grows the most potatoes. That's kind of crazy if you think about it. Like it's so small compared to the big provinces like uh, um, Ontario, Quebec, right? Ontario is the second largest province in Canada. It's huge, right? I mean, it's, it's mainly huge because it's got the, it's also got the Great Lakes. Actually, Ontario seems, seems big because it's kind of wide. Most of the Canadian provinces are kind of long, right? But Ontario is kind of wide when it's got all the Great Lakes. Man, those lakes are massive. You remember my Great Lakes episode where it was just like, I thought it was like I was on an ocean. That's how big the lake, the lakes are just, so big. Lake Superior, Lake Huron, Lake Ontario, Lake Erie. Yeah, those are uh, some amazing lakes. I really love that. That trip was amazing. So guys, here we uh, just cutting up our last potato. And this is a like a triple potato mashed potato recipe. So we're using three different kinds of potatoes. You know, when I went to the store and bought these potatoes, the woman at the till was like, why are you buying different kinds of potatoes? And I didn't, <laughs> I didn't really know what to say. I don't know what I said. I didn't want to explain. The reason I bought three different kinds of potatoes is to teach you the vocabulary. 
of the three different kinds of potatoes. Now, there are other kinds of potatoes too. Um, there are like the baby potatoes, the really small potatoes are baby, called baby potatoes. Um, I think those are the three kinds of potatoes though. The, the, the three main kinds of potatoes that we, that we have here in Canada that you can buy are, are yellow, red, and russet. Just remember those three, you'll be good to go. Okay, so we're just gonna wait here. We're gonna boil these potatoes just to let them kind of soften up. And now while we do that, we're going to make something very important for mashed potatoes, okay? We're going to make gravy. Now, to have your proper, you know, to eat a proper meal of, of mashed potatoes, you need gravy. So, for, I mean, when, when do people eat mashed potatoes? They eat mashed potatoes um, like for dinner, like a, a Thanksgiving dinner, or Christmas dinner, or just a normal dinner. Um, and you have your mashed potatoes, but then you put something on top, and that stuff, that brown stuff on top is called gravy. Okay, uh, so gravy is very important. So we're gonna make gravy right now. Now, you can make gravy different ways. Uh, if you, for example, if you cook beef, if you make like a beef roast, um, you know the juice from the beef? That kind of just nice tasting juice? That can be gravy. You can use that as gravy over the mashed potatoes. But very often people buy gravy in like a mix, like a, a packet like this, okay? Or you can also buy gravy in a, in a can, right? So uh, you can buy gravy different ways. Um, but this is kind of pretty easy. You just buy a pack like this and then you just mix it in with, into the water and um, it's, it's probably the easiest way. And it's cheap. I bought this packet of gravy for 97 cents. This is less than a dollar for a pack of gravy. So uh, let's look at the instructions here. Let's look at the directions, right? There are the directions. It says, in a saucepan, got a saucepan right here. Right? This is called a saucepan. In a saucepan, whisk one cup water and gravy mix. That's it. That's the first step. So easy, right? So we're gonna grab our cup of water here. Look at that. There's one cup. We have almost a cup there. One cup is eight ounces or 250 milliliters. Okay, so we're gonna, we have our cup of water. Now we're just gonna mix in the, uh, the gravy mix. Yeah, now, I mean, you don't need gravy to eat mashed potatoes, or you can eat your mashed potatoes however you want. You could put some ketchup on the mashed potatoes or just eat them plain. Um, but we're going to put gravy on, because that's that's kind of the tra traditional way to eat mashed potatoes, right? To eat, eat it with gravy, right? So we're just gonna dump this mix in here. Now, what's the next step on the, it says to whisk it, whisk. What does whisk mean? Well, whisk means to mix it. Actually, a whisk is a physical thing. Now, I don't have a real whisk, but I have a electric whisk. Look at this, this thing here. Look at that. That's called uh, an electric, electronic whisk, I think. Electric whisk or electronic whisk. So we're just gonna whisk it together, look at that. Mmm, some delicious tasting gravy powder. So <clears throat> we're just whisking it together here and, uh, and then we're gonna put it into the saucepan and uh, bring it to a boil, okay? So is that whisked up enough? I think so. So there we go. Now we're gonna pour it into our saucepan. And we're gonna put it on the stove, All right? So there it is, and we're gonna bring it to a boil. So hopefully it doesn't, uh, our potatoes are already boiling. That's good. I don't know how long it'll take the gravy to boil. But um, 
Yeah, I'm excited about this, guys. Man, I haven't had mashed potatoes for a long time. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to um, we're going to we're going to add something to the mashed potatoes. Okay, I mean you could just eat the mashed potatoes plain. We just mash them up, right? Now we're going to mash the potatoes with a potato masher. So this kind of a tool here, this utensil, is called a potato masher. It only has one job. I mean, you could probably use it. Probably use it as a weapon. Might have two jobs, but <laughs> the main job is it's for mashing potatoes, right? So that's why it's. I mean, that's that's it's just. Um, you know, it just speaks to the fact that potatoes are so common. Mashed potatoes is such a common food that there's a there's a whole utensil built just for mashing potatoes. It's kind of like a rice cooker, right? I mean, pe sometimes people have a rice cooker in their house. Actually, I have a rice cooker. And it's just, it has one job to cook rice because people eat so much rice. Well, people eat so many potatoes, so much mashed potatoes that they made this thing called a potato masher to mash the potatoes. Isn't that cool, right? So um, you could just eat the mashed potatoes plain like that, but we're gonna add a little bit of butter and some milk into the, um, into the mashed potatoes. So we're just gonna melt the butter a little bit here. <clears throat> so look at that, wow, it comes in four, look at these four sticks of butter. Hmm, interesting. Well, there's our stick of butter. We're gonna, let's add, um, wow. It's got the measure measurement on the side. Each of those things is a tablespoon. Look at that. So each of those lines you can see there, it's got the measurement there. Each one of those things is a tablespoon. Let's add, uh, let's add two or three tablespoons of butter. Oh, wow, that looks good. Guys, I'm a little bit hungry. I might just eat a little bit of butter. Mmm. Would you like some butter? Yeah, that's good. <laughs> Guys, let's uh, cut off a chunk of butter. I don't know, that's probably two tablespoons right there of butter. And um, should we melt it in, uh, let's just pop it in the microwave for a couple of seconds and melt the butter. All right, so there it is. This is the bowl we're going to use to mash our potatoes in. So we're going to just melt the butter in there. Add it in, melt the butter for a couple seconds. I put 30 seconds, that might even be too much to melt the butter, but uh, we'll see. Okay, oh, and I forgot, guys, I'm gonna add a bit of garlic. Oh, that's perfect. Look at that, it's kind of half melted. That's gonna be great. And, guys, we're gonna add some milk. So I'll just add a little bit of milk. Let's add, uh, let's add, I don't know, half a cup of milk. Over that much, half a cup of milk in there, and then we're going to add our potatoes when they're done. We're going to add the potatoes in there and uh, just mash it all together. Okay, so this is guys, this is Mark's mashed potato recipe, so it might not turn out very well. I don't know, I hope it turns out. So, look at this what is this called? This is garlic, right? Now, garlic sometimes a recipe will say. Add a clove of garlic. What is a clove? When a recipe calls for like, if it says one clove or two cloves or however many cloves of garlic, that's the clove right there. Let's add a couple of cloves into our boiling potatoes, okay? So we're just gonna smash it up just to make it easy to peel. <coughs> All right, so just gonna chuck it in there. Chuck just means like to toss or to throw. I just threw the garlic in there, I chucked it in there. Let's chuck in one more one more clove of garlic. See if you smash the garlic like that, it becomes easier to peel. Alright, so um, there it is. Just chuck our second clove of garlic in there. Now, I'm not sure if the potatoes are... Oh, they're still hard. We've got to let them boil for a while longer, I think. So, you know, this, I think this is the very first time in my life I'm making mashed potatoes. I don't think I've ever made mashed potatoes before. So this is exciting, guys.
Thank you for joining me for Mark's mashed potato recipe. It's boiling. So what we need to do is, um, where did the instructions? I threw the instructions out. Just fish those out of the garbage. If you kind of take something out of the garbage, a good word to use would be to fish. If you kind of fish it out. To fish, to fish something out of something means it's kind of like you're, uh, you're taking something out of a, of, of a substance that maybe you don't want to touch. So you kind of just, you kind of fish it out. All right, so this was in my garbage. I kind of, I kind of fished it out of the garbage. That's a very high level word. It's a great word if you're, if you're, you know, going to be taking the CELPIP exam or the IELTS or any of these exams. Okay, remember that to fish something out. So the second step here, stirring frequently. I wasn't stirring it very frequently. Um, boil over medium heat and simmer one minute. Okay, so we need to let it simmer, guys. Okay, to simmer means to, um, to bring it down from the boil. You know, when it's boiling, you can see the bubbles coming up, right? And so when, if we simmer a food, like gravy or anything else, if you bring something to a simmer, that means you turn down the heat to stop it from boiling, and then you, you keep it hot, but somewhere below the boiling point. So I just turned my, I just turned my stove to the low, low heat. So now it's just simmering, right? So it's not boiling. It's not boiling anymore. It's just, it's hot, but it's just simmering. So that's a good word for cooking. It's a very important word for cooking, to simmer. So I'll talk a little bit about, a bit more about, um, you know, when people eat mashed potatoes. Like I said, potatoes are, potatoes are probably the most common vegetable here because like I said, people can eat, you can eat them for breakfast, lunch, and supper. Now, breakfast, usually people don't eat mashed potatoes. They would eat hash browns. For lunch, they're probably going to eat fast food, go to McDonald's or something. So then they're eating French fries. For supper, they are eating um, either mashed potatoes or they could eat French fries too for supper. Another way is baked potatoes. Okay, have you ever had a baked potato? Maybe um, one of these lessons I'll make a, a baked potato recipe. It's pretty easy. You just grab a potato, you wrap it in tin foil or aluminum foil, right? And you put it in a fire if you have a campfire. Baked potatoes are really common camping foods because you can kind of cook it in the fire. Um, or you can put it in your oven. Right? So you can make baked potatoes in your oven. Right? So baked potatoes are a really common food as well. Maybe it would actually be a good idea if I make baked potatoes just so I can explain, you know, some of the toppings and that kind of stuff. That'd be, I think that'd be good. But um, there are actually a lot of ways people can eat potatoes. You know, potatoes are, they're a very versatile food. Right? Versatile means you can use something in many different ways, right? Um, like a knife is a versatile thing. You can use it to cut things or whatever. But a, you know, a mash, a potato masher, it's not a very versatile utensil because it's only for one purpose. You can only use it for one purpose, right? Um, just like I would say rice, the food rice, I mean, it's, uh, you can only really cook it one way. What other way can you eat rice? There's only one way to eat rice. I could be wrong. If there are more ways to eat rice, let me know down in the comments. I mean, people eat rice in, in sushi, for example, but still it like for sushi, it still looks, I mean, it's rice where you cook it basically the same way. Um, whereas potatoes, you, you cook it in a whole bunch of different ways. So potatoes are a very versatile food, you know. Like I said, french fries, hash browns, baked potatoes. Um, there's, there's also a, a kind of food called scallop, scalloped, scallop potatoes. I think it's what's called. I'm not sure if it's scallop or scalloped. You know, you can fry up uh, like, like potatoes in a in slices called silver dollars. You can make like a, you know, fried potatoes that are like round, like not the French, fr they're kind of like French fries, but they're just cut differently. 
Uh, they're called silver dollars, I think. I haven't had those for a long time. But, I mean, you can just use potatoes for so many diff different kinds, and even for French fries, right? There's normal cut fries, there are um, sweet potato. Now, a sweet potato is actually a different vegetable. So I shouldn't talk about sweet potato fries. But um, there's those, um, there's different ways you can cut a French fry. You can make a French fry, okay? So if it's, uh, I can't remember the different names of the cuts. But yeah, there's, there's, there's different names. Some, even some French fries have the skin on. But most French fries are, you have to peel the potato to get the skin off and then, you know, fry the deep. That's how you make French fries, right? You deep fry them. Like if you see the people cooking the French fries at McDonald's, they take the French fries out of the frozen, the freezer in the big bag, they dump it into the, into the deep fryer, the tray of the deep fryer, and they just kind of like deep fry the potatoes for a couple minutes. And then there, there's your French fries. Right, so you can even make French fries at home. You can make it from scratch. Remember from scratch means you make it from the beginning. Uh, so you could buy your potatoes and deep fry them in, in oil. Or you could buy the bags of um, French fries from the store and f like the frozen ones. And then you can bake them in your oven. So you can make homemade French fries that way. So they're just, you know, potatoes are so common here. It's like rice. Potatoes are kind of like the rice of India. Now, I'm not sure if people eat a lot of potatoes in Southeast Asia? Let me know, in your country, do you eat a lot of potatoes? Do you eat more potatoes than rice? Now, you know, when I say Canadians eat a lot of potatoes, I mean like European descent, Canadians like myself. Now, a lot of immigrants come here and they eat whatever is, you know, popular in their countries. Because Canada is a multicultural place, right? I mean, if you're from Korea, when you come to Canada, you still buy, you go to your Korean grocery store and you buy kimchi or other kinds of foods, right? And the same for people from India. They eat a lot of rice here, right? They're Canadians and they eat rice. So I'm not saying that Canadians don't eat rice. A lot of Canadians eat rice. Even I eat rice. I love rice. But, you know, generally Canada is known more as a potato country than a rice country. So people eat a lot of potatoes. All right, guys, our potatoes are done. Wow, I'm excited. Okay, so we're just gonna dump these potatoes into, um, into our milk and butter mixture here. Ooh, wow. I'm gonna use our potato masher to get the last ones out. All right, I'm excited about this, guys. Wow, this is gonna be, whoop. Almost uh, let my potato masher fall off the table. All right, mashed potatoes. Oh no, guys, <laughs> this is gonna be too runny. I added too much milk, <laughs> no. I didn't add enough potatoes, I added too much milk. Oh, this is gonna be bad. Guys, my recipe flopped. If something doesn't turn out very well, you can say it flopped. It's, uh, it's a real flop, guys. Oh no, it's too runny. So I'm just gonna keep mashing it up. I don't know, maybe there's still hope. Wish me luck, guys. I don't know how I'm gonna navigate this disaster. This is a real disaster. My very first time making mashed potatoes and it's gonna be a flop. It's supposed to be kind of thick, you know. I don't know. It's not too bad, it's the taste that counts, right? So, just gonna keep mashing them up. I wonder if there's a way I can thicken it up a bit. Hmm. I don't know. It's not too bad, I just added too much milk. So next time, if, uh, if you're making mashed potatoes, I'll remember this too, I won't add very much milk because I added too much milk to my, to my recipe. But it's, I, mean, I don't know, it's okay. Right, there it is. You can kind of see how, it's supposed to be thicker than that, 
Um, here, I'll use my gravy spoon to show you the thickness, right? It's supposed to be a bit thicker than that. It's not supposed to be so, so liquidy. But it is what it is. Mmm, that's good. <laughs> like I said, it's the taste that counts, right? So wish me luck, guys, in all my future episodes that I don't botch the future recipes. To botch something means you ruin it. So I botched this. I botched Mark's mashed potato recipe. Have you ever botched anything? Let me know down in the comments if you've ever botched something. Very often we use that for, for like cooking. If you botch something, it means you just, you ruin it. It doesn't turn out. Or I can say the recipe flopped. It flopped. So it means it didn't really turn out very well. So get yourself a plate and um, we're just gonna put our mashed potatoes in the plate. And uh, yeah, there it is, all right? So like I said, it should be a bit thicker than this. Now, it's still okay though. We've got our gravy here, right? Now, what, we, what I like to do with mashed potatoes, when I was a kid, I like to do this. You kind of make a crater in the middle of the mashed potatoes, right? Like a volcano. If you imagine a volcano, the top of the volcano that goes in, that's called the crater. Okay? So imagine this is like a volcano. You want to make a crater. So we're just going to make a crater in the top of the mashed potatoes there. Mm. All right. There's our crater. Well, can you see it in the camera? Made our crater. Now we're going to add our gravy into the crater. And it's going to kind of overflow. The volcano is going to overflow. That's awesome. Man, this is going to be so good. <laughs> I'm so excited to eat these guys. Wow. I haven't had mashed potatoes in a, probably years. This is my first time eating mashed potatoes in a long, long time. I usually don't make mashed potatoes for myself. I make, uh, what do I make? I, I eat potatoes sometimes, but I don't make them into mashed potatoes. All right, so there it is, guys. Our mashed potato recipe that's a little bit of a flop. It's too runny, but that's okay. It's still good. So we're gonna give it a taste test. What do you think? Here, you should have the first bite. I'll give you the first bite. Don't want it to run all over the place. Ooh, that's gonna be good. There it is, guys. It's dripping all over my floor. That is good. <laughs> that is good. Wow, I haven't had gravy in a long time. That is so exciting. Just mix it all up here. It's almost more like a mashed potato soup. It's not supposed to be this runny. But um hope you guys still liked my recipe even though I botched it. Even though it's a complete flop. But you know guys, I hope you learned some uh some vocabulary and some facts about Canada. The, isn't it crazy that the smallest, the smallest um, province in Canada produces the most potatoes? That's crazy. Um, yeah, and like I said, it's a super common food here. Potatoes. My hat falling over. There. Yeah, it's a really common food. Uh, mashed potatoes. It's uh, like if you go to a Christmas dinner or a Thanksgiving dinner there will absolutely be mashed potatoes, 100%. It's one of the staple foods for any dinner, a real like North American dinner, you know, like Christmas dinner, Thanksgiving, any kind of like a, a special event, there probably will be mashed potatoes, right? And remember, it's called mashed, not mash, but when you say it, very often it sounds like mash potatoes, right? So guys, there it is. Let me know what words you learned. Hopefully um, you learned something new. The three different kinds of potatoes. Yellow, red, and russet. And um, 
potato masher. Kind of an interesting thing, isn't it? Potato peeler. What, other, what else? A oh, whisk. You know, electric whisk. Yeah, so hopefully this has been helpful for you guys. Um, probably be better off if you just looked up mashed potato recipes online yourself instead of following Mark's mashed potato recipe. Well, guys, I'll just write this off. I'll write this one off. If you write something off, that means you kind of just just kind of forget about it. If something is a write-off, it's kind of just a failure, and you just kind of you you just keep going, right, with something. Like for example, if your car, if you're in a car accident and your car gets really damaged, you know your car will be a write-off. It means like the insurance company, like there's no chance to fix your car, right? It's going to be super high to fix. The amount to fix your car would be much more than buying a new car. So if a car is a write-off, that means you just you just scrap it, get sent off to the junkyard or wherever it goes, and um, your insurance company gives you money for the car if you have insurance, and then you go and buy a new car. So your old car is a complete write-off. Right? So I'll just say this recipe is a write-off. means it failed, I botched it, so go look up mashed potato recipes online to find a better recipe than mine. But, thank you guys for joining me nonetheless. Nonetheless, there's a good word. Nonetheless means like, you know, if I say thank you for joining me, nonetheless, it means thank you for joining me anyway. Thank you for joining me even though I failed in my recipe. Thank you guys, hope you're having a great day. Stay safe, stay happy, I love you so much. I'm just gonna enjoy these botched mashed potatoes all by myself unless you come over for supper you're welcome over here for supper to eat some botched botched mashed potatoes with me friends all right take care and as always i'll see you over in the next episode of mad english tv bye for now